Genji Act, a scores of Afrisal to set light on what it is to be one of the most successful European championship in modern history. France wants to make history and so is Portugal and so we want to also make history tonight because we will be deciding who is going to go home with a cool one million dollar C courtesy of Afrisal. The team is very much on top of things and I am very pleased to welcome every one of us watching wherever you might be within the source of this country and of course in this very studio, my team, my people are all in here. Welcome one more time, Musasi is my name, your host and my table as usual. The pundits that have been working with me all throughout this competition have been here in their most absolute manner to set light on this very finals tonight. The teams we'll be talking about later but more about themselves for now. And I'm most honorable to introduce the most honorable of playing and of course coaches in this country, the most honorable Al Hadi Al Hadi. Silla is the head of this team. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much, Musa. How do I introduce you? <laughs> <laughs> Coach is enough. So. If you go by Cletus will be here to let, 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 Let's try. You've been in this business for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Um, actually, Musa, thank you. It's a football forum. I just beg we confine it to football. Let's not go out of it because we might be struggling. No, I wouldn't like that. <laughs> I wouldn't like that. You have been at the head of Gambian football. That's the head coach for on two things. Am I right? Two yes, um, on three on three occasions. Three, okay. Yeah, okay. on three okay. occasions. Okay. I. Uh, I also work for Confederation of African Football ah, okay. as an instructor. I work there as a mic commissioner, and uh, I work elsewhere, and outside elsewhere, football, and elsewhere. Head of delegation to the European Parliament, okay. and a uh, lot of other functions. Thank let's you very let's much. stop there. That, that qualifies me. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. We are in safe hands. We are in good company in here. Yeah. And of course, next to you is um, my good friend, Ebu Fai. Um, how do I go about you? Ibo <laughs> Fai? <laughs> full stop. No, that's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's Ibo Fai, full stop. Yeah, second Vice President Gambia Football. Federation, so, okay. Uh, you know, You've yeah, been in the game for a while. Well, I've been <laughs> in the game all day, my whole life. He's the one who brought me up there you go. as a player, as a coach, as an administrator. Whenever I have problem, I turn to him. Go back to him, talk to him. Very good. He serves as our elder and our statesman when it comes to football in Banjul or sports in Banjul. And a lawmaker. Everything you think. Oh, <laughs> He's been there for us. Thank you very much. Um, next to Matar, Matar Mboj, you've been confused as you know, someone who doesn't belong here, but how do you belong? <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I work with the national team, um, assistant head coach, um, signs the head coach of course, and we also have a team of Alaji Saad and Alaji Morong, um, and a few, other, a few other members of staff. I think um, I'm fairly new as far as uh, guys are concerned. concerned. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm, I think I'm a lucky coach because I get to work alongside these guys, I get to work with uh, the likes of Alaji Saad, the likes of Sang Dong. Uh, I've worked with Bonnie Johnson as well, so yeah, I've, I'm somebody who's been fortunate to have got uh, some experience in my short time. In okay. Prior to your experience academically? Yeah, no, I studied at Loughborough. That's where I got my education. That's where I started coaching. Um, so uh, I don't know where it's Loughborough. Is it yeah. Manchester? Or? <laughs> yeah, it's near Leicester. Um, <laughs> so it's the premier university for sport for sports in, in, England, in the yeah. UK. Yeah, it's just a phenomenal place. Absolutely. Uh, it was a great place to start my career. Uh, awesome place. That's where I started uh, my coaching badges and everything like that. Uh, had a lot of success there. Worked in academies um, and then eventually found my way um, coming, coming to Gambia to help. Uh, started working with the under-20s on a voluntary basis and then uh, eventually found myself with Real as the, as the head coach. Um, we managed to pick up the league as well and after that um, found my way to the national team and uh, here I am. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Samo. <laughs> Welcome. Well, the thanks. only former Gambian international in the panel. Um, quite a credential. Yes, you must be remembered for most of your time in Austria yeah. with Altar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I suppose. Um, I've had a stop start career as a footballer because I've mixed it with academics along the way. But um, I did manage to play um, four or five years of professional football in the Austrian Bundesliga. Uh, more famously for Altach, which I helped uh, get to the Bundesliga in the first time in their history. 
they'd move to a bigger team called Austria Canton and then from there on um, I moved to Asia and now I'm retired. I'm actually not doing much here except I'm trying to get into the football business which is uh, player management and things like that. Um, I'm also raising a family and being home, so <laughs> I like to talk about football. That's Which everyone else is doing, yeah. <laughs> so you're not alone. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, academically, you... Uh, yes. yes, I did go to college in Wabash. Um, it's a liberal arts college, and I was a political science major with international relations as my minor. But that's on the wayside for now. I think that for other purposes, not actually mm -hmm. to pursue a career. Mm -hmm. Okay, there you have them from the horse's mouth. They are the men who will be fans. Was in ecstasy. They say extras. Is that right? Extras <laughs> <laughs> for coming to us this far. Um, let's talk about the ecstasy in which the team has brought onto the nation. Uh, more. Well, um, you look at the current events that's been happening socially and politically in France, um, riots and uh, bombings and all that. A nation of filled with nationalities and this football which has which is filled with immigrants and different nationalities has put the nation at least together for this time and everybody's spirits are up after a dampening start to the year um, for the French people. It's a national pride to be part of this European um, tournament. The euphoria is everywhere. Um, the whole nation of France is behind the team and they are united because of football. Mm -hmm. Could it have it any better, Mata? No, definitely not. I think before the tournament you looked at the squads and who you'd, who you'd pick mm -hmm. and I said that I would take France purely because yes they have a great talented squad but also the fact that you're at home and I don't think we can underestimate the power of uh, home support and I think uh, it's timely especially if you follow uh, culturally, socially what's been happening in France these past uh, few months and years. Mm -hmm. Uh, and also on the pitch, they've had a very difficult time. Uh, a lot of these players were in this World Cup fiasco embarrassment, for one of a better word, that happened in 2010. Uh, they've almost laid to rest those ghosts of, of that tournament where they were, let's put it in kind ways, a disgrace to their country. Uh, they've gone full circle, and I think uh, every, uh, every person of uh, French connection, French origin, is going to be proud watching the team today. Uh, there's another team who wants to come and spoil the party, Portugal, let's not forget them, because uh, <laughs> it's not just one team, no. uh, it's not France playing France. Uh, there's a Portuguese country um, who, as well, they've never uh, won the Euros, and never won a major title, and for them 90 minutes away and they can rest assured that they have a place in Portuguese history as well. We, 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 yeah. we will be talking about them most definitely because they are a force to be reckoned with coming thus this far. Ibu, um, with everything that you had and of course we followed events that have unfolded in France, um, the team um, really um, are, are, are a group of bunch that needs to be recognized. Definitely, they are some of the best young players. They even produce some of the best young players in Europe. In Europe at the moment. Even during this tournament, they struggle to first match against Romania. And in the second match against Algeria, they did struggle. But after that, you know, they were able to produce very good teams. Mm -hmm. uh, that they play very good football, score a lot of goals. Even though the coach still struggle in his tactical setup. Mm -hmm. You know, any setup he use, he's trying to maintain it. They continue to win. But they, 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 they are a team that have a reflection of the African identity. So most Africans tend to support them. And definitely they have all the in ingredients to be able to, to get the results today and you know, be crowned the champions. Okay. Um, before they are crowned champions, the 90 minutes have to be played first. Coach, um, when we speak of this team, uh, this young French team, um, I don't want to talk about their complacency on their entire entity as a playing unit. Um, because you've been here for before, I mean, before and for a long time. I mean, the comparison is ripe of the team that did it before them. Um, how would you distinguish, how would you put these two teams separately? I mean, the Zidans, and of course, I want to come to the, Afri uh, the African uh, I mean, identity and the name tag that has been carried uh, I mean, following them, even though they're not carrying it, but it's been following them. Um, uh, Musa, you're quite right. Um, they have different characteristics. characteristics. When, it comes to, when you compare the two teams, when it comes to individual brilliance, the Zidans, he's no match to any of these midfield players. Okay. Terry Henry is no match to Giroud. 
you have uh, Perez, no match to end up these guys playing on the flanks. And then you had the big boys at the back like Dasai, Turam, Disha, So individually, there are no match. But again, you know, football is dynamic, it keeps changing. And probably that level of individual brilliance, looking at the system that is now being played by teams, playing very compactly at the back to ensure that little, pen, little you don't have penet penetration, mm -hmm. I think they would have struggled a bit. But again, for this team, they have more fighters. Because if you look at the midfield, if you look at um, um, uh, Pogba, if you look at uh, Mutudi, mm -hmm. Uh, Kante. Kante. These are all very combative players. And in the previous team, it was only DJ Dushan who was the fighter. All the other ones were just very ball, uh, very artistic, brilliant to watch, very entertaining when they get the ball. But for this one team, they are more combative and they are more motivated because if you look at the financial resources, the group in terms stay of strong. Big time. They could not even win a match. Even because, their coach. Yes. His team yeah. is not good. Yes, he believes that. But he also promised after the group they will read the finals. They will read the final. Why? Because of tactically he changed the team. Rather than taking the initiative in the group stages to go and win matches, in the, when, he, when they move to the second round, they start to be more defensive. Rather than pressing teams uh, up front, they wait for teams to come on to them. And they are able to hit the counter attack. And Ronaldo is one of the best counter attack players. Not only that, but they are also more sharper. In the, in the penalty box. If you look at the goals they score, most of the goals Ronaldo score and, and then they are inside the 18 yards. All the goals they score so, are inside yes. the box. So that means he has come with a strategy to be able to address the, 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 the second round of the, of the, of the tournament. Mm -hmm. Because group stages are always different with, with, the, knockout stages. with the knockout stages. And that's what he has able to do. He's a defensive coach. Mm -hmm. That's why he come with a very defensive formation. He doesn't even have flag players. Mm -hmm. He tend to use his midfield players to come inside mm -hmm. so that they can close the gaps, deny teams uh, space and time, and then hit teams on counter time. Okay. And he's able to take the team to the finals without even playing very well. Okay. All right. Playing very well is a different thing, um, but winning the whole tournament, winning the championship is what matters to these both to these teams tonight. And in any moment, that will be taking place in the Saint-Denis, in Paris, the Stade de France, where so everything you once again, be. wherever you are, I mean you are, the stage is set at Westfield, where the giant screen is being portrayed for you to follow this very much tonight. It's a wonderful atmosphere, and Officer is responsible for that. And uh, remember, tonight in here, we will bring you 20 good winners of our daily draw that has been happening because it has almost reached the penultimate round. And we shall be identifying who will be that millionaire very soon. And I said it is going to be the 12 that Afrizal will be creating since inception. And thanks to our goodwill, it's and never late. Course, as early as now and as late as 8.30 tonight when the draw will be made or even beyond that, I'm sorry. Uh, um, we shall be in here to do that draw and you could be called upon. You can never tell this golden chair with the million dollars on it. You will be sitting on it and we'll still be treating you like a king in some fashion. I'm very happy to welcome a colleague of ours all the way from Dakar, Senegal, Abi Jalo, who works, Abi Jalo Toure, who also um, works at RTS, as a sports journalist um, and a colleague of um, SJAG, INPS. Abi, welcome to our studios. Manila, welcome. Rode Glalawa. <laughs> Thank you very much. European Championship. All right then. Um, just, I mean, to come back to what it is on the ground. Career, he's been fortunate, I would say, to coach Benfica, Sporting, and Porto in uh, in, in Portugal. Uh, he started off in Porto, but uh, he has experience. Uh, he's in his 60s now. He's seen it all. Um, question marks as to whether he's done it all yet. Uh, believe me, this will be his biggest achievement in his career if he wins the if he wins this game. Um, but that's not to say that it's it's not beyond them. Uh, listen, for me, France are the favourites, obviously. Um, but uh, Portugal, as we've already discussed, uh, they have the weapons. They have uh, this new tactical approach of playing on the counter attack that could potentially hurt France. Uh, but for me, I think Deschamps has enough about him to uh, to outsmart uh, Fernando Santos. If you look at the number of players on the French side, that tends to 
produce the goods and the goals. Um, they are various. Um, I, I think for, for who will be going back and forth. One goes, one stays. Another goes, another stays. As a box-to-box -box midfielder, and I think even though it's going to be a, a scrappy game, that Portugal will tighten the spaces and try to deny the French room or rhythm. Uh, in the end, as Mojang was trying to say, he was he will try to you know stretch the the the. the the Portuguese defense uh -huh. because the two half backs, Sanyang and Evra, they do not attack as much as possible. You know, so they will try to use those two. Or he will force uh Payet to come in and then open up for Sanyang. Then he will have more players in midfield okay. to be able to you know have the same numbers as okay. the as the okay. Portuguese in uh, it's, it's, it's just whoever will handle the nerves. Everyone we're talking a lot about the tactics, but really in these games when it's a final, <laughs> it's, it's just nerves. <laughs> <laughs> who's going to be the most nervous? Who's going to be the least nervous? And who's going to exactly. be more comfortable? Mm -hmm. uh, because you can talk about tactics and doing this and putting this player, but I just know what to say. We just have to go back and then enjoy this game. It's the first 45 minutes of the European Championship 2016 quarters of Africa on national television. Let's enjoy it and then come back and talk more on this phenomenal tournament so far.